the whole reason why I'm doing this video now is this is kind of your last opportunity to get this package right here. And the more important thing is that it's actually going for less than the price of the normal blaster, which was overpriced at uh, about $80 MSRP. These were priced at $100 MSRP, $99.99, which was, of course, ridiculously overpriced. And because they overshot on that, um, if you see right here, Target, which is the exclusive for this, um, it's a retail exclusive, they're currently dumping these for uh, $29.98 or $99, about $30. Bucks. So if you wanted to do a deal, a little project, whatever, with the Stormtrooper Blaster, the Heavy Blaster, now is the time to do it. So, again, this is not a review because this thing has been on the market for over two months now. So, it's nothing new. But uh, it's essentially a side clip mounted strife. Semi-auto. And, of course, it makes the sounds. And the performance on it, um, from what I've seen from the reviews, is like it's in the high 50s, mid 50s. Which is in line with the Jen Urso Blaster as well. So without the little pieces on, it doesn't look as big and impressive. Once you put all the pieces on, then it starts to look cool. But that is, again, not the point of this review. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to crack it open. And uh, we're not just going to swap the motors out and switch it to lithium polymer power. But uh, let's, let's turn this thing into an actual machine gun. Because there is no machine gun that I used in the service that was um, semi-automatic. So let's make this thing full automatic. Okay, so we have uh, cracked this thing open, stripped everything aside. That's all a pretty straightforward process. If you don't know how to unscrew a blaster, um, this tutorial is probably not going to be terribly helpful for you anyway. So we're just going to skip that part. And this is the exposed interior, which again, if you've seen um, mod guides, these are already out there. Uh, it's pretty much your bread and butter. Again, like I said, this thing is just a really large strife and... Um, if you want to modify the performance so you're not getting that 55 to 60 feet per second, then uh, really all you're going to do is swap out the stock switches for micro switches. You're going to swap the stock motors out for whatever motor of your choice. Um, there's all kinds of, of good motors to choose from currently. So that's one thing that uh, that's one thing that's not not a difficulty to do when it comes to modifying the performance of these blasters. This is the sound card so obviously we want to have this thing going like so there's a little switch back here um the speaker it's actually kind of weak of course the speaker's pointing down so it sounds a little muffled but uh, i want to keep all that in there when i modified all the Jin or so cassie nander blasters i left all of these sounds and uh visual effects in intact because we also want that scrolling effect which is kind of cool and it'll look even cooler when you paint that barrel shroud black because it'll give you a nice high contrast. But um, looking here, you know, I mean, if that doesn't look like a strife arm, then I don't, I don't really know what does. Okay, you can see the arm's a little bit thicker. Um, yeah, so maybe I will. Maybe I will have to remodel it. And it looks like it's a little bit longer on the back and you can see the hook is a little bit different too so there might be some angular differences but functionally it's it's the same thing we have this pin here that sets it back and it pushes forward so what we need to do is have a piece that is going to have the um, the gear rack again this should look really familiar if you've seen the auto strife videos um, I actually kind of got tired of looking at it because I've done so many of them but uh, this piece is essentially going to go there, and in this recess there, we may have to clear out this uh, speaker holder to something smaller, but this is kind of where the whole beauty of 3D design and printing comes into play. Now, if you don't have a um, 3D printer, that's a little bit of a problem, because obviously there are going to be some custom parts involved in this build, but uh, these days, printers are so pervasive and cheap that if you don't have a printer, then you should probably know somebody who, who does. And in fact, um, this is kind of a, it kind of came as a quasi-surprise, but maybe not too much of a surprise. If you go to a 
decent public libraries, they will actually have 3D printers where you can, then you can get time on that. So there are public services that will allow you access to get 3D printers. So after I do my, my modeling for the piece, the custom pieces, because I don't think it's going to be drop-in easy to use, um, the mounting points are going to be a little different because the mounting plate that I designed for the Strife is not going to fit in here because that was custom made for that shell. But just looking at this right now without even touching a screw and pulling anything out, um, I'm 90% sure that I can make an adapter for, for, uh, for this that'll allow it to be automatic. So here's a quick look at how the mount works. So we can get that in focus. So this is version 4 of the mount and uh, it's essentially a friction fit. So that just drops in like that and that's how it mounts. So you can see it's pretty stable. And it's drop in. No shell modification required and no fasteners required either. It just kind of clips into place using these retention pegs. All right, so here is one final update. Um, this is about uh, a half dozen different iterations for the pusher arm, the gearbox mount, and the matching spur gear. So all of these were modeled from scratch to make sure that it specifically fit inside this without having to do any kind of shell modification, well, minor shell modifications, mostly to the uh, this mounting bracket here. And when we pull this apart, you'll be able to see that there's a little recess cut out here. And then two of the support points had to be removed to accommodate the gearbox itself. So that's pretty much it for the hardware parts. And um, once I've confirmed everything on this is rocking the way I wanted to, then I'll update or I'll upload all these pieces, the final version of the pieces to Thingiverse, where you can download them when you do your own conversion. That's where that stands for now. Um, so, of course, the other half of the equation is the, uh, the circuit, redevised, or the revised, whatever you want to call it, circuit. And rather than doing the normal, which is people just have a tendency to, when they get a new blaster and they want to do a, a motor mod and a, a battery mod, the easiest way to do it is just to strip everything out and then create a very simple uh, circuit, rewiring it using all new wiring, etc. And none of the original loom gets used. And the problem with that is when you start tearing out all of the loom, you have to redo the circuit for the lights and sounds. So a lot of times what you'll see is rather than having the circuit that turns the UV lights on when the rev is on, it'll just be on all the time or there might be a switch that turns it on. Um, maybe it'll be wired to a jam door switch so that the lights are always on until you turn them off. Um, I kind of prefer having the original, the original version the way that the circuit functions. So it charges when you rev, and then it turns off when the rev is released. Now since we only have one activator switch, because it was originally designed as a semi-automatic, we need to add a second switch into the circuit. So what this switch is coming from, and this is a little bit, a little bit of experimentation here, so there may be a revise update. I've already been considering uh, releasing the first part of this video and then the second part of the video once everything is up and running. Not that all of these projects work out the way you want them to, but I'm too far into this one, it's already working and I can tell it's already good. Um, but I may do it in multi-parts. So this switch used to be here and that was the um, magazine lock switch. So in addition to moving, uh, the, removing the mechanical parts for the magazine lock, we had this additional electrical switch, which uh, all you do is you just take these two leads here, cut them off, and then you put a little bit of shrink tubing on there, solder those leads together, and seal up the shrink tubing, and that acts as a bypass for the switch. We now have this extra switch, which conveniently fits right in here. So this is how we can activate the um, fire switch, which will turn on the pusher motor. And that would just be something like, like that, right? So we need to incorporate this into the circuit and the circuit needs to be in a manner that this can only be activated via this when this switch is depressed. And that will prevent people from pushing this switch and activating the pusher motor when the flywheels are not running, which would cause a jam. So 
this is the circuit and um, I'll probably do a photo of that and then put it up in the end of the video. But this you can see is incorporating the uh, MOSFET. So it's a combination of the auto strife and a MOSFET circuit um, with the sound effects, the sound and light effects. So this has not been tested yet. Again, this is really just an amalgamation of two separate circuits that have been tested and that work. Um, based on that, I believe, and I, again, I can't really make any claims until I've actually wired it up and, and tested it running, that this will allow you to use your LiPo batteries uh, without burning out the sound card, uh, without burning out the switches, because everything's going to be going through your MOSFET here. And, of course, with your flyback diode to protect the MOSFET. And we don't even need to use uh, the chunky arcade button cabinet uh, micro switches for that. The intention here is to be able to use the switch that we cannibalized from the circuit, the magazine door lock circuit. So circuit is done. We need to wire this up and then do tests but that's where it stands right now we've got our hardware and the mechanical functioning is good right now all we need to do is our circuit modification and see whether or not we can uh, keep all that stock functionality in place without burning out um, the all-important sound card and to a lesser extent the led array and the uv lights for the glow strike function all right, so let's just do uh, one final test here on the cycling, just to show that all of the tolerances and parts that we've modeled are fully functioning. So this is after multiple revisions and iterations for fitment and functionality. So that's good. And uh, that was running off of a uh, 1S battery and this is a, I want to say this is a 20C battery, so 20C output, and we'll be using a graphene 2S battery, and those will be 65C, so considerably more current and voltage will be going through that feeder via the MOSFET circuit that uh, was uh, previously outlined. So from there, let's uh, move on to getting that circuit, and then we can see what we've got at the end.